On Sunday we began to look at how it is to catch a thief. So we continue in John chapter 10, the gospel according to John, who's called the beloved apostle, chapter 10. From verse 1, Jesus begins by saying, Verily, verily, or most assuredly I say to you, the one or anyone not entering through the door, I'm reading from my interlinear Bible, into the sheepfold, but going up by another way. That one is a thief and a robber. Whoever is entering the sheepfold or who does not enter it by the door, that very person is a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the door or by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. That shepherd has responsibility for a particular group of people or a particular set of sheep. And he calls his sheep by name and leads them out. But the shepherd is well aware that though he is calling the sheep by name, there is a greater shepherd. And next verse, when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers. The second time we see the terminology used. But the sheep did not hear them. They came, but they were not heard. And here in Greek doesn't just mean that you listen to somebody's voice. It means there's a corresponding response. The sheep did not follow those. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that you may have life and that, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Good. Good, good, good. Now, in, in, in further, further consideration of this text, which we will hope to complete tonight, this chapter, this, this portion of it, I was drawn to establishing something very early in this discussion tonight that I missed before. Or not that I missed, but it was not revealed to me before. You don't miss things in the Spirit. They're revealed to you according to God's will. Jesus spoke to the shepherd or the person who enters or who came in, but not the right way. And he referred to that person or those persons as thieves and robbers. Now, the first thing that we have to understand is that the thief is not a sheep. Bring it into human perspective. Thieves are leaders. I am not talking to followers. Followers don't have the capacity to be thieves. Sheep are not thieves. Thieves must have leadership or a leadership role in order to have a voice that is strange. He said the sheep hear voices. And when you examine the church, the church is led by voices. 
and there's a voice that is heard and people follow. Therefore, thieves are never sheep. Sheep function by ears. Leaders function by voice. Therefore, the thief is the leader. But it's a strange voice. So then I don't think about your friend and anybody else who's not in leadership. In order to have a voice, one must have authority. And in order for there to be authority, there has to be subordinates. You can never have authority standing alone. There must be somebody that you lead to have authority. The World Cup soccer is showing. That's why you see me getting so deep so fast. In verse 5, Jesus says that the sheep would not follow what? Go to verse 5 and show them. It's right there. They wouldn't follow what? So if the sheep never follow stranger, but the thief has to be a leader, who follows the thief? Okay, let's break the text down. The sheep will never follow a stranger. The, 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 the stranger has to be a leader. The thief is not the sheep. The thief is one who, who leads some set of things. But sheep are not following that person. Who then is following the stranger? In order for the stranger to be followed and to be called the thief and the robber, somebody must be following. Hear me now. They are followed by wolves in training or wolf pups or whelps since sheep never follow them it's somebody else that's following and the only person who would be built to follow a thief is one who is a wolf but just don't know their power yet only wolves are comfortable in the presence of other wolves sheep are always unsettled when wolves are present. But wolves could care less since we are all the same. Why do you have such a big problem? Why you have an issue? After all, all of us serve the same God. There's nothing major. So they see no major crisis that you would have observed since they are in a position of comfort wherever they are found. Why don't you take a moment to look at those whom you call friend, brother, sister, close connection. Look at those and ask yourself a basic question. What makes this, these people so comfortable being around those who swear to devour you? Jesus said, if they come in any other way, that's a thief and a robber. I went straight into the Greek because I know he would just say thief and stop. If that's all he meant. But why would you say that's a thief and something else? I needed to find that out. And when I went to find it out, I was happy that I did. Thief Thief in Greek is the word klep, get, gives the word klepto. It's kleptisi. Now, klepto I said in the English. You know, klepto is right. That's where the word came from. What's a klepto? Good. They call them kleptomaniacs. You can't keep your hand in your pocket. Listen to the word Jesus used to describe the first one. Whoever enters any other way, he's referred to as kleptasi. Why would he call that one a thief? Let's talk about a thief for a minute. The thief in that definition, klepto is one who is a thief, but is not a violent thief. They function by stealth. They never want to be seen. This thief will enter and will do things, but never want to be seen. They are not violent in their nature. They just have a desire to achieve something. And that is, remember now, the thief is not a follower. Thief is the leader. 
This leader is not aggressive, is not violent, is not, doesn't rage. This leader is one who is very calm, extremely peaceful, and you have no sense of danger when the leader is present. What we have to measure then is the intention, not the deportment or the way they look. What is the intention? The thief has no intention to do things by God's standard or by God's way of operation. They want to get something, but they do not want to do it through Christ. And that leader has no sign of aggression. This thief, therefore, is someone that many of you could have likely invited to your home, sat with, give a bed to sleep on, all kinds of stuff since in your... Okay, let me take it out of the leadership then. I, I have had, remember, have memory of times when persons would come to our home as when I was small, younger. And they go, go out through the house. They don't have a knife or a gun or anything. So we played together. We, we had fun together. And then when they leave, we discover something is missing. But I didn't see the person take it. So now Pastor Mel and my sister Noella and my brother Errol, we have big sibling rivalry. You took my stuff. I didn't take it. I didn't want it. And the four of us are arguing, then we go before the judge. And he listens to the, and then we say, oh my God. None of us took it. It was this person who was so quick to leave. You were having fun all the time and suddenly you just, you just can't wait to get home. Oh, that one took it. But why didn't we see the person in action? That thief operated in stealth mode. Okay, so let me bring it to your spirit now. There's some people who you had at home. You invited them into your space. You gave them access and they could roam into the deepest part of your house. This, this is called your temple, the house. They could have gone to places in your house that nobody else ever did since they were not violent. You trusted their deportment and you trusted their personality without investigating their intention. And I took them past the back of the all, all over the house. Oh, oh, this is my room and that's my toys. And this is my prized toy. I love this one. And the thief is okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Okay. When I least expected, they went to the thing I most valued. They took it and they left. Some of you never discovered what you lost until the thief left. You not, no, I'm not talking joy and peace and all that. No, nobody could take what Holy Ghost gives you. But some of you lost confidence. You, 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 you know how you know you lose it? You say, I will never trust again. Who, who made you say that? Whenever you make that statement, always mark a face. It's because of some experience you had. You said, I will never trust another person. That's because you, you, you brought someone in whom you trusted and they stole your confidence. You open the wrong door or the right door to the wrong person. Oh, Sister Mel, thieves are amazing. When you think about a thief sometimes, they know that if you have wealth, don't think about money, think about you. If you have wealth, you normally store it in a secret place, in a vault with a code that only you know. And the thief is smart enough since you trusted them and you let them into your, your home. And you trusted they didn't mean to harm you. So you take them and say, oh, oh, this is where I store that. Oh, and the thief now knows that's the place I need to get to when you are not watching. Some of you in here have given your code to the thief. Okay, what did you do? You sat before them in a meeting. They were called your leader, of course. You had to trust them. You poured everything to the person in confidence because you trusted the person. You did not realize you were opening your vault to a thief. All they wanted to know was what did you have inside of you? 
what do you have inside that I really want? And as long as I have access to that information, I no longer need to be in your presence since I was after what you possess and not who you are. Jesus, help me. Many of you have felt valued without understanding that you are being robbed. You felt valued since every Sunday they call my name. Every time there's a bulletin printed, my face is on it or my name is attached to it. And whenever there's a strong point to be made, I'm the most important person in the church. They, they consult me for decisions. You felt so valuable that you missed the, point, the time to think that I was being robbed. Brothers, let me hurt. You know that's our major strategy to get the girl. She feels so prized and so valued until she begins to neglect to reason as to why does he want intimacy without commitment. You were robbed. And the reason why you're so mad is you were not beaten to be robbed. You willingly open the vault and you willingly give them the code and you so smart that you told them this is, this is the code between me and you. Nobody else knows this code. I trust you to give you the code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, 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 know, you know how, how mad you get when you discover that when you, you go back to the vault since somebody else may come for help. I am not talking money, get it out your spirit. I'm talking your life here. Somebody else shows up to pull from you and when you go to that place where you thought you had the information, you no longer have it. It's gone. It's gone. Go right ahead. Yes, 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 yes. I told you, 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 the question is, is that, are you referring to things that like the capacity to care for people and stuff like that? Some of you have, a, you, you swore on your Grammy's grave. I will never, never again after this day do this. Why did you make that promise now? You discovered what was stolen then. Thieves are those people with the ability for you to feel that you're safe while you're being robbed. Since they cause you no personal injury. They don't hurt you. They don't harm you. They simply desire something that you have. A thief would sit, Stephen, and would listen to you play. And instead of saying, teach me, they never asked you to do that. They would listen to every note you play, grab some phone and record everything you're doing. And you would be shocked to hear yourself without being the instructor who taught them. Since you know they're not, they're not you, you could guarantee they're not saying Stephen taught me this. The thief, I'm talking the leader, will always shine without reference. They will never point back to anybody who got me here since I was able to steal information to get equipment to function. Some thieves would be submissive to leadership. They would sit, they would swear that I was, I was yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm, yes, teach me, I want to learn. Just mentor me, just lead me, please. And they give you all the names they know are required for your opening yourself to give them what they want. Holy Spirit, give me an instruction, son, to review the terminology of father. And I'll teach on that on Sunday. Mother. Your father is not by gender. Since I've discovered that I did not have 
or do not have sons. Not all of you. Some of the people who are engaged, the people in all over the world call me father nowadays. Which in Greek means one who imparts information too. But I'm taking it deeper than that to relationship. Let me take you there since the Holy Spirit dropped it in me now to give it to you. Fathers are never lost people. You don't give them up. I'm not talking male or female. Whenever God says that is your father, the person may hurt you, but it's still your father. The person may break your heart, but it's still your father. The person may walk away from you, but it's still your father. The person may despise you, but it's still your... That's when we're talking father. Fatherhood in this case is how committed are you to the, the, the relationship? Not the desire for something. For I have learned there are many who will call you a mother to them or a father to them until... And it's the until that we got a problem with. So get your mind ready for Sunday now. We're still talking thief. They're even stealing relationships. They grab a hold of something that they see, okay, then this person is, okay, Pastor Reginald is benefiting so much from this man, I need to steal an opportunity to get what he's getting. But I'll grab the opportunity without a commitment. Without the respect, without the honor. Oh, but the Lord taught me something in John 14. If you want to know who your daddy is, listen to how you sound. You can't fool me with that. You could fool me with a promise, but you can't fool me with the sound. Jesus said, What you see me do is that what I saw my you can't you can't rob me of that one. What you hear me say is what I heard my daddy say. If you are my son and you speak what I didn't say, you're not my child. Your mama cheated. And you need to find your power. I am about to do a DNA test. So, so the thief is a strategist. Thieves are very patient. And that's what made you lose the fight. Oh yeah, they would wait. They would wait. They are, they are, they are, oh, they are patient and observant. They would sit for days and weeks. Watch this. The thief observes your pattern. That's how they function. They know when you come home. They know when you leave. They know when you go to bed. They know when the lights are out, how long it takes for you to sleep. A thief will come and peep you through the window for four days and never touch your stuff. And it's the day when you say, well, okay, after all, I never lose anything. It's when you just lost everything. All of that I said about the thief is, why don't you ask yourself, how did they come in? We can't walk away from that. Don't ask, don't look at what they are doing. Ask, how did they get in? If they did not come by the Lord, you were robbed. Well, you weren't robbed. They stole your stuff. Come for me, Ashton. Let me give them the step two. Come. You know, I always have to work with you, son. Come. Go to work. Right here. Don't let them see you yet. Right here. Thieves are people who don't ever want to be seen. They don't want to be caught. Therefore, they're going, they would operate in stealth mode. Right, Elder? Good. Let me know when you're ready. Ready? Come. He doesn't want you to know who's under here. God, I feel you, Holy Ghost. It means then that for a leader to be a thief, they have to be a hypocrite. 
Since hypocrite in Greek means hypo is under. Crit is mask or judgment. The person must be under something. You know their face, but you do not know who they are. But his mouth could be seen. The Lord said the sheep will not follow the stranger's voice. But you were so impressed with their voice. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, he sounds good. So when the thief is in your company, the thief still has the voice. However, you do not know the thief's face. Which is their identity. Which is who they really are. How many of us have been taught by thieves? If all you ever submit to is the pastor on the pulpit, you're serving a thief. You're supposed to know me more than church. You don't ever take the risk to commit your life and your spiritual growth to one you don't know outside of here. Who are you? when this comes off and why don't you want me to see who's under here what's there for you to hide so this thief could very well be somebody I call my father my brother my mentor this is somebody that I trust with my most dark and deepest secret and I do not understand that he has an intention that is not for my benefit. Sow seed. Come sow. You're just pouring, you're just giving all the time and never knew who you were giving to. Since you were giving to a face. Another father. You see the hands? We heard on Sunday. He's, he's well equipped to leave no trace of his work. And that is why sometimes when, you, when, when we or people begin to speak of who influences them, someone else is that man, not him. Him? Huh? That person? And they can't believe what you say. Now you got someone on special pills who just crazy. They can't respect anybody, but I'm talking about somebody who knows the know. And they can't believe that you with such spiritual intelligence would be following that face. What they don't know is you're not following that face. You're following the mask. That's the thief. Never know who he is. So even if I have surveillance camera, I still don't know who did it. Oh, but Holy Ghost is faithful. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. Yes, he is. If you are an intelligent sheep, call my name. <laughs> call it. If I'm an intelligent person, I will not look for his face. Call my name. That's Ashton talking. I don't have to see him. From the time I hear the voice, I know who is in operation. Call my name, daddy. Call you. Call my name. That's my father calling. Now anybody else, you put up your hand and call my name. Let me see if I know you. I said one, one. Put up your hand. That's Pastor Mel call me. Somebody else call me on that side. That's Deacon Jabari call me. Did I look at him? That's how you know your father. He knows your voice without seeing your face. And you know his voice without seeing his face. If you try to see the face of the person and they wear a mask, you are still lost. If you want to catch the thief, don't take the mask off. Just say, talk to me. And if your voice is unfamiliar, you're not from my father. I know my father's voice. Every, all of my children's voice, I know if I, even if I don't see them. From the time he called my name, I could call the cops. And they ask me, do you know the person's face? No, I don't know his face. It's Ashton Taylor. He's the thief. <laughs> How you know? 
I know his voice. You didn't hear what I just said. How do you know that it was him? I know his voice. But if I do not know the voice and I call the cops, do you know the pro No. What did they say? I could tell you everything the thief said, but I still don't know who the thief is since I'm not familiar with the voice. How familiar are you with the voice of the person you say leads you? Or you have too many voice banks to pull from? How many are giving you directions and instructions that you're so lost you don't know which one leads you? Last I checked, my GPS talks in one tone, one. One voice, only one. When I put it on in the car, I am accustomed to her voice by now. She is nasal. It's a woman. Go back around. We can work again. Go ahead, son. Oh, Lord. You have to do a... F okay. So you see, in a natural court, the voice recognition is inadmissible. I can't say I, I know his voice. Huh. That is why the ways of the Lord are not the ways of man. The ways of man is I know the face. But God makes provision for hypocrisy. I know your voice. It's amazing that it's not... Uh, 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 admissible in court indeed but sometimes the FBI and these agencies know how to work the voice and they match you by f oscillations and frequencies oh that's the person oh when you say yes that's exactly the frequency that you talk at you're the crook but it won't take it to court since most of the time when they get to them they kill you but do you see the value of knowing someone's voice as opposed to knowing their face I could be all the way behind here. I don't even see. And once my father calls my name, call it. I don't have to seem to know that to say yes, daddy. When I was small, younger, and I go on my roaming rampage, I used to test my mother's voice range. What this? I don't need to see her face. When she says, Nigel! As long as I could hear that, I'm in a safe zone. Now, I can't see her. I don't know what she's doing in the house. I would be all over the place shooting the bird, doing all kinds of stuff, beating the neighbor dog, you name it. But if I don't hear her voice, I tell my friends, come, let me go back this way. This way. I ensure I'm in a space where I could hear. I don't have to see to know my mother is calling me. Can we work this a little bit? Okay. It means then there are times you may not know where I am, but you could still hear me. Oh, Jesus, have mercy. You don't have to know where I am. You could have a father that you say, okay, this is my father, and your father could be in the world of trouble. If you work by your eyes, you'll be discouraged since you see your father's in trouble. But if you work by your ears, I could be speaking to you from prison and encouraging you to know where I am. That's why the apostles wrote letters from the cell. They still have power, though I don't have freedom. Oh my God. But you in church, people in church are so crazy, they want to see that he's looking powerful for me to believe what he says. How I look has nothing to do with my power. It was the bloody Jesus I told you what had all the power in the world. That's when he was really at max. And everybody's scared and running. So Jesus said that person is a thief. Now let's talk about the next one. And a robber. Robber is even stronger now. Oh God. The robber is a thief, yes. But this time, it's a thief that operates with violence. Come again, Ashton. This time he comes. He doesn't even care if I see his face. Now he means business here. The robber that Jesus said is the person is a thief and a robber. All right. The robber comes to me. He does not care if I see him since his intentions are violent. 
Oh, now we're playing with trouble here. Some of you know that you dealt with robbers before. These are the set that will tell you, you would never be anything if you walk away from me. You will die. You will become to nothing. I will ensure your ministry is nothing. You are nobody without me. That's a robber. They would be violent to you if you ever say you'll walk away. I'll tell everybody what you did. I'll tell them you sold the church money. The robbers always have aggression and intent to harm you. Therefore, they're the ones who make you submit more than anything else. Your submission is in fear, not confidence. Since you're so scared, they will think, oh my God, he'll take my certificate back. When you see Holy Ghost come up inside of you, you have the quality to look at a robber and say, take whatever you got to take. Kill me if you have to kill me. But from this day forward, it is over. You don't be scared of robbers. They are leaders who have every intention to hurt you. They are violent people. Violence in the kingdom is not by hands. So tie me up. Look at the robber. He would tie me up. What is he doing? He's binding me. The thief does not impede my ability to function. He just steals something from me. The robber ties me up. I cannot go anywhere. He binds me while he tries to get information. Tell me the code. He doesn't know the code now. But the threat of harm will make me say, hey, five, five, six, seven, four, five. Oh, that's the code. Good. He binds me. He confines me. And I have to watch him work with my information given. So I'm not an active participant. I'm a fearful participant. He has driven too much fear in me and I know his intention. I know that this man is going to kill me. He wants to hurt me at all costs. She too. Don't they just mail up here? You don't want to make me, make me pastor? I'll tell them that you slept with me last week. Oh God. Oh, we have to ordain her. How are you suddenly so quick one ordain somebody you know isn't ready? I cannot make progress in the company of a robber. My hands are tied in the company of a robber. He may leave my mouth open only when he wants to hear information. But after he gets it, he will shut me down. I never could talk again since I've given him what he wanted. And the worst thing about a robber is he will leave me as I am. And he walks away satisfied and you in the church felt important if you were so important to the church why were you so useless your ideas are so great but it's always executed by somebody else why you couldn't play a part give me the code and that's all I want from you. And if I only make a sound to announce my condition, my life is now threatened. You will never preach again. I will ensure that all the conference venues are shut down from you. I'll call all the pastors and tell them never to get you in their pulpit. That's when you know you're in trouble. When you're serving a leader who got company with pulpits they own, So he's not a good boy. We, we can't have him preach to us. To our people. Oh, you could release me. Who do you serve? This person was never invited. They don't, they don't have to be invited. They kick the door in. They break it down. They shoot the lock. They put TNT and the lock, blow it up. Whatever they have to do, they don't care if you're home. They barge in and make their presence felt. And tell you, I'm the leader here. God made me the leader, so I have a right. You have no right to do anything but what God has instructed you to do. Leadership of God's people has nothing to do with my will. It's with his uh, uh, will. 
his way and his instruction. I, if ever you hear me start talking like a madman in here, listen, I'm the pastor here. I'm the leader here. And all of you better do what I say. Run. Leave. Don't tell me I've, I got children and all that. Don't worry about all that. I am, I'm begging you to go. Never submit to a person who announces human authority. Never. Any leader who leads you in church by human authority is a dictator. And a robber. You my son, you're then not going to talk to him. Don't talk to her. Hey, hey, hey. We don't go like that. I told him one time, hey doc, I am a married man. I sleep in, I don't want to see the word I use. Let me use the polite word. I sleep with a woman. So when you talk to me, be considerate that you're speaking to an adult. You don't rule me like that. Know the difference between advice and instruction. When God talks to you, that's instruction. When you talk to me, that's advice. I don't have to take what you say. That's right. That's right. Don't confuse the two. When you talk to your, your, your babies in your house, everything you say is instruction. When I talk to her, that's advice. She's 22. You can, you can never issue a spiritual threat to me if I'm a blessed person. You could never tell me God could curse me if I'm a blessed person. You could never tell me I'll be nothing if I'm a blessed person. Because I am the seed of righteousness and the seed of God. It's impossible for a man to curse me when God bless me. Catch yourself. Tell him but catch yourself. You think I play with you here tonight? Say, catch yourself. You scared of some joker? When the Holy Ghost of God has empowered you, you are beyond human curses. Threatening me? The rob, the robber, the robber, the robber is amazing. And then the last step, the last step, the last step, the last step. Or we could go home on this one. Oh God, mommy. They come with an empty bag. Mm, that's how you know the thief. When they show up to you, you see the bag. You have confidence that they have something to offer. Because your nature is you have something to give them. After all, they're with you. You don't know that the thief has nothing in here. He leaves room to take from you. Oh, so that's how you do uh, business, huh? Oh, and that's how you play that drum beat. Okay, okay. Uh huh? And, and, and that's how you prepare to speak. Even that they steal, son. They study how I function. Some have the nerve to ask. Tell me how you do this. Come, come. Tell me how you make people. F I make? Don't set me up. I don't make people do anything, doc. No, ask him. No, I ain't got to ask God, man. You can tell me. I can't tell you. I am not God. Go to him. But they, they come with a bag. And while you are feeling important, they are being fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now this is a warning for those of you who always think that you must feel special feel useful feel valuable you may be filling the bag of a thief and once they get what they want they always leave you heavier than they came oh god May I announce that you have caused some people's promotion because of your information? You help them to be heavier than when they met you. They are better now. <laughs> they are wiser now. They are greater now. But they are ungrateful and waiting for another person to rob. They rob their way up. When they get through, 
there's a chain of people with the same story. He came to me and I gave him this. He came to me and I gave him that. He came to me and I gave him that. And then he came to me and I gave him that. Before all of us know it, we are looking up to the one we empowered to rob us. I could hear your spirit saying, shut it down. Shut it down before I start fighting somebody in here tonight. Just shut it down before I start cussing somebody. I can shut it down. I can shut it down. But just, just, just consider what you really have. Do you really want to feel important? Or do you want to know that you're holy? You are righteous. You are pure. Don't, don't, value never comes from people's opinion of you. If that's your system, you are a subject for thieves. What do you have left now that they have become who they are? <laughs> Just... I want some of you go home tonight and begin to think. Listen, Holy Spirit is so amazing in the way he, he teaches. That sometimes you don't see the thief. You don't see them stealing. But because of the faithfulness of the Spirit of God, you lay in your bed after you've lost it and begin to say, Father, show me. You know my intention was pure. Just give me a glimpse as to who. Show me who's responsible for having me where I am now. I have lost so much. I've suffered so much. I really can't put my finger on the person who got me in the state I am now. Would you just by your grace show me? And Holy Ghost takes the mask off and presents to you the person responsible. And don't mind. And when he is so in his faithfulness gives you that revelation, you got to be careful. If you're not careful, you will not be compassionate, neither will you be merciful. You have to be careful. You got to be careful now because he's faithful to show you. And when he shows it to you, it's not for you to have revenge. It's for you to understand that it's my mercy that gives you revelation to determine future action. Be careful now. The Lord is faithful to reveal it. But are you faithful to conceal it? Okay then. You got to know how you're handling this thing here now. Because in the kingdom business, when he reveals the thief to you, it's not for vengeance. It's for wisdom. It's not for vengeance. It's for wisdom. Since the thief is never converted, therefore the thief would not be trusted. Holy Ghost is faithful to show you and he wants you to have wisdom to know how to function. An apology from a thief doesn't change him. They're normally sorry before a judge who says, I will lock you up. Use wisdom. God, show me what is happening here. Why am I losing in this area? Oh God, Bishop, then you come and you say, Lord, why am I losing after this person keeps leaving? Whenever this one leaves, I lose. Whenever this one comes, I lose. Whenever this one comes and goes, I lose. So show me! Can you handle when you see it? Son, he showed me thieves in my life before. And when I sat and the thief came to pay a visit, not here, so you're free. The thief came to pay a visit and tried to seek counsel again. My counsel was in laughter. Hey, yeah, man. okay, maybe, oh, probably. I give no bit of information. Zero. Why? I have learned my lesson. Holy Ghost doesn't waste time. Why would he show me for me to do the same thing again? Once he gave me the revelation about your intention, I closed the door to my information. Shut shop. Ask somebody else. I don't know. Maybe you could ask that person. Go, 
go their way, go that way. Well, probably he could help you. I would never make the commitment I made to be robbed twice. But you are so faithful to organizations that you miss principle from the scripture. How did they come in? What was their intention? Do you know the people who sat in meetings and call you by name and say, if we use this one, this event will be successful? That's all they did to you. Regina, be careful. Lorraine, be careful. If you want to be heard so badly, I'm telling you what I know. They will call you by name, put you on a poster, and you feel so special. And little did you know, you're just a public attraction, not a ministering servant. If you can't be satisfied in here with singing for glory for him, you'll always be tempted to be important out there. Holy Spirit is faithful. He would take the mask off. Oh, Jesus, he'd bring the surveillance tape to you. And you would look at it and say, Oh, I don't know the face, but I know the walk. <laughs> yeah, I know the walk. Or I know, the, I, know the, I know that shoe. I know the shirt. I know this, I know this mark. You, you, you don't know the face, but he shows you the, the, the certain characteristics of the person. And you say, based on these things and these features here, oh, that's the person now. Now that you know, what will you do? That's the essence of these few weeks. Will you be committed to the relationship? Or will you be committed to the revelation? You would not fool me again, ever. Period. You. Right there on, on Facebook or YouTube. Or Facebook. Not even here. Do you know how it feels to have committed sons for real? And you pour, I, I'm not talking gender. You pour everything into these people. Among the sons of God was a son who was walking to and fro in the earth. If I'm impressed by the faces of who sits before me, I will miss the nature of those who are before me. I don't ever have to ask him, Where were you? 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 I never have to ask certain questions of sons who are genuinely sons to me. Why is it that some people always have me wondering and worried about where they are? And what are you doing? And who are you mixing with? And why is it your company is so distasteful to me? These are good questions for us to think about. I pray that by Sunday we'll have a shouting message. Something going wrong in here. You can't afford to lose. This is, this is the midpoint in the year of maturity. And in the midpoint in the year of maturity, the storms must be calm and we must get to the other side since there's a demoniac, there's, a demo, there's, there's somebody over there really needing help. They're desperately in need of help. And if we play games in the middle, we would miss the whole journey. We are at a crucial point. Tomorrow we transition into July, the month of perfection, the month of completion, so the nonsense will be over. We are looking at maturity and we're looking for expansion. God stretch me in my spirit that I could receive this kind of information without being hurt and aggressive. I will just receive it and be responsive in truth. Give me the grace. Pray this prayer. Give me the grace to function when I hear it. Give me the grace to function. Don't give me revelation without grace. It will kill me. Give me the grace to handle what you show me, Jesus. You come too far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -mm -mm. 
too far. We are halfway there. We are halfway into the journey. If it's a thief or if it's a robber, both of them have the same intention. And it's not about being kind to you. Let us stand. We need grace. We have it. And I remember the Apostle Paul was begging for God to take all kinds of stuff away. And all the Lord told him is my grace. Thank you, son. My grace is enough for you. Never pray for revelation without grace. Never ask God to show you things without asking for the grace to handle what you see. There are times when he has to prepare your spirit to show you the face since you'll die if you see it without that grace attached. There are some friends that have, of mine, I call them former friends, by the way. The reason why I was a violent person, I could not handle deception. If you want to do something to me, do it. But never make me feel that you mean good. And then you hurt me after that. I, will be, I used to beat you to a pulp. I don't fight anymore. I'm delivered. But I still don't like deception. It's a painful thing for me to bring you into the most private place in my life. Only to discover that I lost something when you left. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. I was telling Gina about the story when my, in high school days when my friend, he bought his fudge. You know what he called it? A little square thing. For snack. And the other friend stole his fudge. He didn't know it was stolen. Stole the fudge. So before snack time come, the thief said, hey, I got fudge. So my friend who, in his mind, got his fudge in the bag, said, um, give it to me. He said, no, $5 for this fudge. Not U.S. <laughs> so my friend, my boy, paid for the fudge. He's buying his fudge back. In his head now, I could steal any this, this here since I got back up in my bag. Oh, when the break time came, I see this big ruckus lick down. My friend, I said, what happened to you? Why are you fighting this boy? He said, he sell me, let me tell you in Guyanese language, he sell me my fudge. In other words, he sold me my own fudge. Boy, the day was going to kill him. <laughs> you know what feels to know that you would have invested in something you thought would have made you gain when it's just a duplication of the same thing you had? They didn't get what I tell them. So you pay to go to some conference and think that when I get there, I, oh my God, I got to sow a seed. You run all over the place for word and you're investing in that. And when you go home, you realize, but this is exactly what I had all the time. You get hints. Oh, if you say, if, come on, come on, dial the number, dial the number. We got a word for you. So you don't know the word yet. And you just go deliver your money and enter your credit card number. And the preacher told you exactly what you know already? You're paying for your fudge. Deception is nothing that's easy for people to deal with. Especially when they are committed people who are deceived. We pray for grace to help us. For grace to keep us. I didn't even realize. Look at that. I didn't even know what we were going to look. 50 bucks. You know what 50 represents? Jubilee. And 55, grace. Look, then hold my 50. Come. <laughs> I love you, girl. Hey, this, these women in the church getting brave and bold. I like these, these ladies. You guys playing too much. Let me money. Let me. Don't play, boy. 
You sitting there, some of you saying, Lord, listen, I need to make, and you just playing. No, we don't play games in here anymore. Too long. We have fair in the journey already. You want so tell somebody, lend me. The, no, don't say lend me. Don't pay me back my money. Okay, okay good. All right. Okay. <laughs> but we pray for grace tonight. There's a celebration coming your way with the revelation. You feel the revelation will hurt you. I promise you this. When Holy Spirit comes on the scene with you, it's always to help you make you better. He don't show you things to hurt you. When you see it, it will free you and you will be, uh, listen, you'll have celebration to know that you'll not be robbed again. Your money will make sense after tonight. Since you'll not be investing in a crook. We pray, lift your hands for me. Your grace, Lord. Your grace. Reveal to us those thieves, those robbers. And we pray for wisdom. We thank you, as a matter of fact, for your presence in our lives. Let us not look with human eyes. But thank you for the ear of the Spirit. Lord, thank you for grace. Reveal so that we can act. We pray for strength. We thank you for strength. Thank you that our lives will not be tossed around. We would not walk in a circle of deception. We will not be tricked by a different face with the same behavior. We will be wise to detect attitudes, characters, and traits of action that will not cause us to be consistently deceived. Teach us never to trust the face of men. Give us the ear of a sheep to hear that voice. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that mercy and grace will abound toward us tonight. Show us in our quiet moments those who mean to harm us by trickery, slights of men, deception and wickedness. Show us, we pray. May we not be moved by invitations and by uh, affirmations and words of influence. But help us is our prayer to know you and you crucified. Lord, thank you for sending your servant back with this message. Thank you for those who connect in, media, in the media world that they will receive tonight or whatever time they're viewing this. And their lives will be transformed for the better. You said vengeance belongs to you. You will repay. We worship you for truth. We praise you for truth. We thank you for truth. We honor you for revelation and insight. In Jesus name. And we give you praise tonight. Somebody say amen.